50 years ago cars had about a 40 or 55 amp alternator on them. Today they have a 150 amp alternator plus. Your caravan didn't have a battery in those days, whereas today it could have a 100 or even 200 amps of batteries. So you have a great charging system on your vehicle, a great demand on your caravan, and the huge problem is the connectors in the middle. They are so out of date, it's untrue. They're blocking all the power that could come from the front into where you want it at the back. Not only that, then there's a voltage drop down the cables which would prevent charging happening anyway. So what we're going to do is show you what your standard vehicle is doing when it's trying to charge the battery in its normal format. And then we will fit what we call a battery to battery charger to the system and you'll see the difference. These are the vehicle to caravan connectors which cause all the problem. They do what they're meant to do 50 years ago, they most definitely don't do what they're meant to do today. So let's use this, do our measurements and then fit the alternative. Okay, purely from the point of view of convenience, what we're going to do is run these extra cables on the outside of the vehicle just so you can actually see what we're doing and see how simple it is. So the negative would go to the negative of the battery and the positive would go to the positive of the battery and then obviously you would run the wire internally in the vehicle neatly and tidily. So we have taken the wires outside the vehicle here just to show you what we're going to do. So again round here and we're getting here to the connector. Now at the connector here we have two Anderson sockets 160 amp. The reason we used 160 amp is that um, it sort of jumps from 50 or 60 amps up to 160. The cable is quite thick uh, so we just went for the 160. We've got the waterproof connectors, we've got a handle on the other side to make it easier to uh, pull apart and then from there we would go to the battery to battery charger which will be positioned inside the camper van or the caravan depending on how you're installing this, then straight to your battery. That's really that simple. So we will now connect this up so you can see the difference. Okay so what we have here are the leads coming from the Range Rover coming down here. Here we have the Anderson connection. So we have made the Anderson connection there as you would on your vehicle. We carry on to the caravan. Here we have the caravan with a battery to battery charger which is connected up to the caravan battery. So that would be your typical installation. Easy, no fuss. Now let's see what it does. So we have already now discharged the battery using the lights in the fridge inside and what we're going to do is Use the battery to battery charger first to show you what it can do. Uh, here we have an amp meter which will show you the amount of amps going through the system when we switch it on. Then we will disconnect the battery to battery charger, connect the standard caravan plugs and see what it can put into the batteries in the same time frame. Okay let's try that. Okay, we're ready to try. So, can you switch the Range Rover on then? If you note, we have the standard plug there disconnected. And let's go down here. Now, it takes a couple of minutes for the unit to run through a self-test before energising itself. So, it's quite sunny today. I'm not sure if we'll be able to see the LEDs going on as it goes through the self-test. Once it's finished the self-test, then the unit will engage and start to charge the battery. Okay. So at the present we're doing 13.8 volts there and on the input we're doing 49.50 amps. I'll move this over a little bit. So we're doing 50 amps into the battery from the Range Rover. 
Okay, so we've disconnected the Sterling system. The battery's back at 12.67 volts, and the current going in is at 0.1 amp. Uh, we have now connected up the Range Rover. So let's start the Range Rover. Here's the. So let's go back and see what we're doing here. So we're putting into the battery 3.7 amps, 4 amps and the voltage is 12.76 okay so we were putting in basically 10 times more electric which is a 500 percent improvement on the charging now just in case you think this isn't actually the case what i'm going to do is get them to connect up the sterling system again while we're still moving and then again this will take a few minutes for so this is all live nothing's changed so again the unit has to go through its startup it's that's what the beep is so it's starting up We're now at 38 amps, 40, and the voltage is now going up to 14.4 or 14.1. We're still at 37. Mm. So that's the cable connected round to the unit we are still putting in 37 amps there 38 amps and the voltage is at 14.3 volts now what we're going to do again is disconnect this unit and instantly plug in the other unit so if we keep my meter on here so right pull that up off so I've disconnected the unit there and now we will reconnect the car unit and now we'll move the amp meter over to where the car is feeding the power in and we are on 3 amps. So we're literally putting in 10 times more power than what the standard system is doing. The voltage as you can see over here has dropped from the 14.4 where it was way down to 12.8 and that's the basic problem. So with this situation or with this equipment now you can charge your battery 10 times faster put a lot more into the battery so you can actually do what's known as wild side camping you can simply stop the caravan wherever you want and use it from the battery knowing that when you start the vehicle up again you will charge the battery up quickly so let's have a look inside a modern or relatively modern caravan you can see here we have halogen lights which are not a good thing at the best of times there are microwaves we have quite a large fridge with a freezer and more electric lights all of which are very demanding on a smallish battery and this is not to take into account the children who no doubt have their iPads, iPods, i everything and have nowhere to charge them. So what we're trying to do here is to make it possible for modern electrical demands on a caravan to be met without actually going to a campsite. Now you have the ability to charge the batteries 10 times faster and put a lot more into them. Bear in mind this is a 60 amp model. Uh, we have a 30 amp model there that I'll get my assistant to hand me over. Uh, so this is the 30 amp version. Uh, pretty much for, for a 100 amp battery the 30 amp version would be more than enough. It's still 
15, 10 to 15 times better than what you've got. Now, why not put two batteries on? Then you can now put an inverter on, which can run your electric for your phones, for your microwave, for your hair dryer, and you can simply stop the caravan wherever you want. You have at least one or two days worth of electric. When you connect it back up to the car again, within two hours driving up the road, your batteries are pretty much full again. So this allows you to do the wild side camping. It's easy, it's not expensive. The approximate cost of the battery to battery charger is about 250 pounds. You've got cables here. There's probably about 60 pounds worth of cables. The Anderson connector is probably 10 pounds. So as you can see in total, when you consider the value of your caravan versus how much you spend on campsites, it really isn't that much of an investment to get yourself away from campsites. Uh, next we'll show you what happens when you use a Euro 6 engine car with regenerative braking. The whole alternator system is completely different. It's a modern vehicle. This unit will work the same. Uh, so we'll show you that working uh, next.